Hey guys, I'm Jameson with Rogue Engineer and today we're gonna to be building this console table. It's got a concrete countertop and a really cool four x four wood base. It's a knockoff from Restoration Hardware, the Heston Collection. And without further ado, let's get right into it. So to get started with the concrete top, we needed to make the form first. Now for the form material, we're gonna be using three quarter inch melamine, And melamine has a nice, very smooth finish to it, but it's a particle board overall, and it's perfect for creating concrete forms. Now, if you're going with the same dimensions that I used for my concrete top, the top actually is 55 inches long by 17 inches deep. And for this top, I used three 50 pound bags of concrete countertop mix. Now, concrete countertop mix is actually, uh, it has a finer aggregate to it, so you're not gonna see that. It's gonna flow more smoothly than a standard concrete would when it's mixed up. So for the same dimensions of the top that I use, the 55 by 17 inches deep, three 50 pound bags of concrete is gonna create a top that's approximately two and an eighth inch tall. So if you're adding a three quarter inch bottom to your form, then your side walls are gonna to need to be that two and an eighth inch plus the three quarter for the bottom. Now to assemble the form, we're gonna to wanna to use one and five eighths inch. I use drywall screws, but any type of wood screw would work just fine. But before you can assemble that, you're gonna to need to pre-drill those holes. Space those holes about anywhere from six to eight inches apart, and then make sure you have at least two screws at each uh, upright joint. After you get the form all screwed together, then you can apply a bead of silicone to the inside seams. Now this is one of those things where it's going to give you that mitered um, round over edge to the, to the concrete since the face of it is gonna be down. You're gonna wanna lay that bead of silicone down each of those seams and then up the upright joints as well. And make sure that you have a cup of water on the side to dip your finger in as you're running that finger down that bead of silicone. That's going to just provide a slicker surface for the silicone to not stick to as well as leave you a nice uh, round over. Allow adequate time for the silicone to dry. And while you're doing that, you can actually measure for the wire mesh that you're gonna use as reinforcement for the top. Most concrete has rebar inside of it and a, counter, a countertop is no exception to that. We're gonna be using for this project six by six wire mesh to go inside. Make sure that that wire mesh sits inside of the form without being too close to the edge. And you can cut wire mesh down with either an angle grinder or bolt cutters will work just fine. Now you can mix up that concrete and most of these bags of concrete, I know Quickcrete also makes a countertop mix, but they will tell you how much water to add. And we used a, uh, a mortar hoe, which is a regular hoe with, uh, with holes on the end of it. And that's gonna allow the mix to flow freely as you're mixing it up in, the, uh, in a, a mortar bin or a big plastic bin. Another way to do it is to use a five gallon bucket with a mixing paddle, like some sort of mixing wheel and attach that to a drill. And that would also mix up a mortar batch just fine. Once you get the concrete mixed up per the instructions on the bag, then we can add it to the form. We're just gonna be doing one bag at a time and the first two bags will get added before we add that six by six wire mesh for reinforcement. As you're putting the concrete into place, you should notice that it's more of like a, almost like a quicksand consistency where it goes in almost as a solid and then kind of melts into place. Now then you can pick up the form and slam it down, just pick it up and, and drop it on the surface and that's gonna allow those air pockets to work their way out of the concrete. Another option is to use an orbital sander and go around the outside of the form or even a reciprocating saw without a blade, which is what we use to go around the form and, and vibrate those air pockets out of the concrete. Before adding that last bag of concrete, we're gonna go ahead and add the wire mesh to the concrete. We'll just set that on top so that it rests right on top of the second bag of concrete. And then we'll mix up our third bag and, and add that to the top of the form. Allow your concrete to set up for a set amount of time. I think we did two days actually uh, before we took it out of the form. I've heard of people waiting even less time, maybe like a day. Take it out of the form and allow that thing to cure all the way around for several more days. And then you're gonna want to sand the surface down and polish the concrete per however you want it to look. Now that we've got the concrete out of the form, we've allowed it ample time to cure and we're gonna to need to seal the concrete to prevent stains. But before we do that, we want to sand down the concrete and also kind of polish it 
take away any imperfections as well as kind of giving us a nice, smooth, consistent look. And that brings me to our sponsor for this project, Diablo. They recently came out with a product called SandNet, which is a competitor to sandpaper. Um, and the cool thing about this is that it is a almost transparent sand net and it has, um, they go up to grits of as high as 400, which is perfect for polishing concrete. And concrete is gonna produce a very harmful dust. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you have adequate ventilation as well as dust extraction. However, it creates a very fine dust. And whenever these, these uh, pieces of sandpaper get clogged up, you can simply remove them from the sander and knock them out to get all of that fine dust out of the sandpaper and then you're good to go again. Just slap it back on the sander and keep on polishing. If you wanna learn more about SandNet or Diablo Tools in general, make sure you check out their website, diablotools.com. I'll make sure to post a link directly to the SandNet below in the description. All right, so now with the concrete countertop all sealed and ready to go, or actually waiting for the first coat to dry, we're gonna move on to building the legs and all the wood structure below it. What we're using for that is four x four Douglas fir, um, which I was able to get from my local lumber yard. However, we have a planer here, so we were able to plane all of those surfaces down. We took just an eighth of an inch off of each surface, which made all the, it cleaned all the wood up, and it also, got rid of those rounded edges. Now what we're gonna do is miter those on the miter saw at 45 degrees and connect up those three squares that are gonna make up the two legs and the square that connects it all. So now we've got all of our pieces cut for the base. Like I said before, we're gonna have three rectangles. I believe I said squares, but they're gonna be rectangles. One is going to be a tall, or two of them are gonna be tall, um, and they are going to be the legs. And then there is going to be one longer, shorter one that will nest inside of those two and kind of connect everything together. So the way that we're gonna attach them, um, all of these corners are mitered at 45 degrees and we are going to cover each one of those joints with wood glue, and then we're gonna screw through with a giant leg wood screw um, that will connect all of these. The nice thing about those wood screws is that they're gonna be hidden for the most part for the legs. We're gonna screw up from the bottom and down from the top, so those will be hidden below the countertop and on the floor. And then for the rectangle that goes through the legs, we're going to be coming up from the bottom and then down through the top as well. And um, we'll see how this screw head is gonna look and, and turn out. If that will be seen, then we might need to, to fill that with some wood filler or uh, even plug it with a dowel. So let's get started. So this is that longer rectangle that I was talking about. And the top of that is could be viewed from certain angles. So rather than leaving an exposed screw head, what we're gonna do is we're going to um, use a dowel to plug it. So before I screw this together and glue it together, I'm going to, um, I have a dowel here that's, this one's seven eighths of an inch. So I'm gonna drill a uh, seven eighths of an inch hole or recess into it, probably about three quarters of an inch and then I will glue and screw it together. Then I'll recess that dowel and glue that into that hole to fill that and uh, then come back and cut it off with a, with a pull saw.
All right, so I just went ahead and marked seven inches in from the ends. Now I'm gonna take the smaller pieces, which are actually the top and the bottom of the legs. I've also marked the center of that where, the, where this should fall. And then I will align this and glue that and screw that into place. We'll do the same thing on the top there, and then we'll glue and screw the legs on, the side of the legs, vertical upright. So I hope you guys enjoyed this project. I love the way that it turned out. The concrete is beautiful. This is actually our first concrete countertop project and it turned out great. And I'm sure there's gonna be some more in the horizon. But wait, don't go yet. Make sure you check out this video up here. YouTube thinks you'll like it and I do too. If you haven't hit subscribe yet, make sure you hit that button up there. And if you want the full plans on how to build this, make sure you hit this button down here. That's gonna take you over to the website. Until next time, be safe and happy building.